everybody. Good afternoon and welcome to the Build for Good finale. My name is Sarah. And I'm Shaz. And we'll be your MCs today. To kick us off, we have opening remarks from Director of Open Government Products, Lee Hongyi. Hong? All right. Hello, everyone. <laughs> My name is Hong, and welcome to the finale of the first ever public Built for Good. For the builders, it's great having you with us for the past month. I hope we've made this opportunity worth your while. I think the team's really enjoyed working with you, and uh, we can't wait to see what you've put together. Uh, for the people just joining us today, we're excited to have you with us. I know this is a bit of an unusual event, so it really means a lot that you're sort of interested in what we're doing and wanted to check this out. Um, and so I thought I'd take a bit to share with you why we're doing this. Basically, for the past five years, our team has been running an annual hackathon in the government. Um, projects like the CDC Digital Vouchers, the Scam Shield app, and even simple things like the Go.gov links you see everywhere, all came from one of these hackathons. Um, we found that from these hackathons, we found that the best ideas come not from the most senior leadership, but from when you empower the most number of people to try a lot of different ways of making things better. So the thought was, why not extend this to the public? You know, the idea is pretty simple gather together the most capable and motivated people who want to try and make society better. Help them form into teams and provide them with as much support as possible to help them understand the problem areas and try to build solutions. And I really do mean support. So we have designers to help you, know, to help you guys with design, engineers to help with engineering, and we have officers from a dozen different agencies to sort of help people sort of understand the problem areas and, and, you know, fa and, and the challenges they face in trying to solve them. But what was critical was that all the solutions came from the builders themselves. We're trying to build a place where good people can work towards the public good. I think the past few years have shown that there are a lot of ways our country can be better, and a lot of people who want to make it so. I think the problem is that for a lot of people, it's hard to know where to start, you know? The volunteering only gets you so far, and joining the public sector really isn't an option for, isn't a, isn't a real option for a lot of people. And so what do you do, you know? Because if, if people don't feel like they can solve public problems, they stop feeling responsible for the public good. And rather than gatekeeping the public sector, we want the government to be a place which empowers people to take on problems that they could not solve on their own. We don't want Singapore to be a place where everything is someone else's problem. We want it to be a place where a motivated citizen who sees a problem and wants to try and solve it can. To be clear, this is not easy. I'm sure our builders have learned over the past month um, you know, if it seems like something can be solved with a simple app, I'm sure there's a bunch of operational problems. If the operation seems simple, you know, there's probably a bunch of design challenges, getting to work for all the different kinds of people. And if the design seems simple, there's probably difficulty just getting people to solve, you know, work with you and try out your idea or even give you feedback. If these problems were easy, they would have been solved a long time ago. I think it's very tempting to be cynical about this, and I'm sure all of you know people who are. Um, people who think that, you know, people who think that nothing will ever change and that we're stupid for trying. That, that every problem we have left is unsolvable and every aspiration we have left is unachievable. That this is as good as it gets. And in Singapore, there are a lot of people like that. But for everyone here today, I think you're here because fundamentally you don't believe that. I think you're here because you believe that while, while we may not be able to solve every problem right now, there are still plenty of problems we can. I think you're here because you think that we can be better and you want to find a way to make it so. I think there are things that are worth working towards, and we want to build a place where people who believe that can do so together. We want to build a place where people can feel empowered, a world just a little bit better than it was before. A place where we may not always succeed, but a place where we will always try. We want to build a place where people can build for good. And so I would like to thank all the officers who helped make this month happen. Thanks to all our guests who helped you know, for, for supporting what we're doing. But most importantly, I would like to thank the builders. It's people like you who are going to make this possible. And we're excited to see what you've built. Thank you. Thanks so much, Hong. Um, and so, you know, we have a very packed agenda today. So um, I'll be sharing with you a quick rundown of how today will go. So we have 60 builders and 13 teams. Each team will have three minutes to pitch and two minutes for questions from the floor. So uh, both judges and audience members in person here at CSC are welcome to ask questions. So don't be paise. Uh, this month, 
Builders, many of whom have day jobs, have been spending their precious free time trying to understand some of the thorniest problems in Singapore. And they've been building prototypes to address these problems. Just to emphasize that today, they'll be sharing working prototypes, not final projects yet. Throughout the program, we will also have public voting, which is open to anyone in person and online. Public voting is open now until 4 p.m. Three teams will win categories such as most touching solution, most eye-catching solution, and citizen's choice. And lastly, today we will have our esteemed judging panel who will help us select three teams to win a, th a $10,000 sponsorship to continue working on their products after today's finale. This sponsorship will ensure that teams have the resources they need to take their prototypes into production and make their dreams into reality. So if you give us a second, we'll share our um, QR code for the, uh, for the voting. So do make sure to get out your phones and scan the QR code once we, once we share it. Um, but yeah, as we wait for that, maybe Shaz, I can ask you, what has been your favorite part of the last, last month? It's been a busy month for all of us here. Oh, all right. So wait, my most favorite moment from the past yes. like, whole month, hmm, I think it's mainly for the builders. Like, uh, I remember there was this one random morning where all of them warmed up to Macarena. That, one, that was like something I won't forget. Right, like they were doing 12 counts of, yeah, and shaking it all out. How about you, Sarah? I think my favorite part was seeing the transition from the beginning of Build for Good when teams were still trying to form teams um, and we weren't sure what prototypes they were going to build to today where the teams are confidently sharing their prototypes to all of you all here and online. Um, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a really busy, busy past month. Yeah, it re re was really, really busy. It was really, really fun. But question to the, to the builders here. Anyone here found good friends from this little anti-hackathon? Raise your hands, raise your hands. Any friends? I mean, make some noise if you make any friends. Yeah. All right, okay, wait, where's the QR code? Yeah, so if our friends up, up in the back could help us with our QR code. Oh, you have to get the QR code. Sorry, there we go, awesome. Okay, so make sure you vote for your favorite teams um, by scanning this QR code here or typing um, go.gov.sg slash bfg dash finale dash public dash voting. It's a mouthful, so maybe you just scan the QR code. <laughs> All right, don't worry, the QR code is legit. It's not a scam, it's from a go.gov.sg link. So, you know it's good. And do you know who built go.gov.sg, Shaz? Oh, I mean, I don't know. Sarah, would you like to enlighten me on that? Actually, it is our team, Open Government Products. Wow! All right, round of applause to Open Government Products, guys. Woo! Yay! Quick org plug there. All right. Yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, we have a very packed agenda today. So we have um, our pitches, our 13 pitches, um, divided into two groups. So we'll have the first half and then the second half. And then after the second half, we'll take a break for our judges um, to take 15 minutes to select the top three winners for the $10,000 um, sponsorship. Um, and then after that, we'll be sharing the, the winners as well as the winners of the public voting from this QR code here. Um, and then we're going to have a closing speech by our special guest. So, yeah, shall we get started? Yeah, let's get started. I'll introduce to you the judging panel today. So, our judging panel is a team of five, a good mix, coming from both the public and private sector. A uh, mix of people who has been part of teams that definitely have impacted your everyday lives. First up, we have Lo Yan Ling, Minister of State for Ministry of Culture, Community and Youth, and Ministry of Trade, and Mayor of South East, uh, Southwest CDC. Next, we have Li Hong Yi. You've met him just now. He is none other than my boss and director, Open Government Product. Then next up, we have Randy Hunt, designer, author, and chief product officer at Morning. And next, we have Shafuddin Jaya, creative director, digital labs at Mastercard. And last but not least, we have Yumin Wong, staff engineer at GitHub. Yeah, round of applause for our esteemed judging panel. Um, and thank you again, judges, for taking the time out of your busy schedules to come with us today to, to, help, um, to help watch the presentations um, and help us select our winners. Yep. So we've met our judges for today, and finally, the time has come for you to meet the teams. So first up, we have Team ScanShield. They aim to develop solutions to enhance online safety by improving some kind of scan. What are they actually scanning for? I don't know. So give all your attention to Team ScanShield. Mic test. All 
Right, let's get started. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Heng. I'm currently a software engineering intern and team lead for Team ScanShield. Together with me are my team members, Shantanu, Shaka, and Chin. Four weeks ago, we asked ourselves this question. How might we protect the public from QR code scams? Due to COVID-19 and the push towards digitalization, QR codes are everywhere. But with ubiquity comes opportunity for misuse, leading to a rise in scams. In January and February this year, we saw QR codes masquerading as SingPass and One Service. In April, a victim lost $20,000 to a QR code scam. Scammers don't just steal money, they steal trust. Trust in the everyday digital services that are supposed to make our lives better. Trust, Singapore can ill afford to lose. We can solve this problem right now. That's why we are introducing ScanShield, a QR code scanner leveraging open government product ScamShield to provide you real-time protection for your QR code transaction with no extra downloads. We also plan a business portal integrated with CorePass that allows businesses to generate QR codes embedded with digital signatures, offering consumers authentic and traceable QR codes. We have prepared a video demonstration on how our product works. This is how it works when it encounters a scam QR code. And this is how it works when it encounters a safe QR code. You can even send it an image of a QR code. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no product like this on the market right now. And this is a great opportunity for us to proactively make Singapore a safer digital society. Before ending this presentation today, I'd like to involve the audience. First, secure your QR code transactions today with ScanShield. In the next 45 minutes, you will see a lot of QR codes. Next, share this initiative with your loved ones. Let us fight scams together. We are Team Scan Shield. We shield scans for the public. We are here to build for good. Thank you. We will now take questions, please. All right. Thanks, Scan Shield. Any questions for the team from the audience here? Anyone? All right. Uh, Mike Renner. Hi guys, thank you so much. That was a great presentation. So my question to you is, um, during the whole ideation, design, prototyping, what was, what was the biggest challenge that you guys faced and how did you guys solve it? Thanks for the question. Um, we, the biggest challenge we faced was the time constraint of just four weeks. Uh, we conducted a user research and we asked about 100 people, um, would they first feel safer when scanning QR codes if they had an app that could show them whether it's safe or unsafe. So the overwhelming response to that was yes. The second question we asked them was where, what type of, should this be a standalone app? Should this be deployed on Telegram? Uh, should this be deployed on WhatsApp? So again, the overwhelming response that we got was we should make a standalone app that you know, we can use to scan QR codes. But due to the time constraint of four weeks, we thought it's not feasible to develop a new app from scratch. So that's why we instead deployed on uh, Telegram instead as an MVP. And as you can see, it's a working MVP. Although uh, if too many people use it at once, it might break right now because it's not, we haven't configured auto scaling yet. But yeah, so that was the constraint um, was users wanted an app, but we could only, due to the four week constraint, deliver a Telegram bot. Yeah. Thank you so much for the presentation. It was a very good product pitch. Um, if you had more time, what would be something like in a technical uh, challenge or that you would have tried to do something different or do it differently? So actually this is just our phase one product. We want to get 
a QR scanner into the hands of people because now there isn't a QR scanner. So first, that's that. The technical challenge would be, mm, well, according to the SPF, right, the general demographic for being scammed is no longer who you think, they're not the elderly. They are actually young people. And so what do young people use to interface with the virtual world? Their phones. And what's a QR code? It's a portal between reality, our physical reality, and our virtual reality. So in my head, the first thing I want to get is to secure that portal. And the technical challenge of that is actually building the Telegram bot itself. Currently, I just use a simple tiny EC2 server and a long polling method because I didn't have time to really read through all the documentation. But uh, in future, right, when I want to scale it up, I was thinking perhaps serverless, use a Lambda, you know, 2,000 invocations per, per second, it's fine. But uh, the, tele the technical challenge was just that, and that's where I think the problem will be in the future, to actually scale it up. But it's not that hard a problem to solve in the first place. So yeah, hope that answers your question. Just to add on to that, actually, um, as Hang mentioned, the business portal, the way this bot works is that, uh, you know, OGP has Scam Shield, which already has a classifier that um, has a white list of these, these uh, links are safe and these links are not safe. So that's what we have built our app over. And mm -hmm. the issue is that in the future, if we want to allow other businesses or other people to register, we need that QR code. Uh, we need that registry, business registry. But just because a business is registered with CorPass, just because it's registered on paper, doesn't mean that it's legitimate. I can register a business and sell fake goods, right? So that's why in the next phase, we will have to find a way to um, have some methodology to verify, even though a business is registered with Corpus, but we still go one step deeper and see whether it's really legitimate or whether it's still malicious. So I think that's a challenge that we'll have to yeah, encounter in the next phase. Yeah. Thanks. All right, thanks, Kenshu. So next, we have a team of students. And wow, from my alma mater, SMU, we have team Safe Space. They're here to address a problem space, obviously, but which problem space? I'll let them explain it to you. So give it up for team Safe Space. My test. Hi everyone, I'm Sean and this is Tyler and we are from Team Safe Space. Our team aims to tackle the mental health problem space in Singapore where there is a significant amount of friction for use when seeking for mental health related assistance. Let's imagine Sam. Sam is a typical university student like myself. She struggles to balance the heavy university workload resulting in a buildup of stress and anxiety. As a result, she looks for various avenues to distress. She searches online for help, but she's bombarded by large amounts of information. She's also afraid of going down to the counsellors or asking her friends for help, as she does not want to get judged by them. We can see that Sam is not alone in her journey in seeking for mental health related assistance. One in three adolescents in Singapore actually reports depression and anxiety as well. Now, let's all imagine if Sam and this youth have a safe, accessible, and confidential platform where they can share more about their mental health concerns with others who can both understand and empathize with them. That brings me to Safe Space. Safe Space is an anonymized digital peer support system that we have created. It is a one stop Telegram bot for youth seeking peer service support. We chose Telegram as it is the go to platform amongst the youth and it greatly lowers the barrier of entry for youth seeking help. Now, let's have a quick demo of how Safe Space works. To get started, Sam will first have to create her account. She will just have to answer a few simple questions, such as her gender, her student status, as well as the nickname she would like to be identified by. Then, her current level of happiness. She hasn't been feeling the best lately. Next, her age. And finally, the area in her life that's currently stressing her out the most. With that, her account is now completed and is ready to begin matching. To begin matching, she clicks the begin command. She has been matched with user. On the left, we have Sam, and on the right, we have Abby, who she has just matched with. In this safe space, they can now share more about the concerns that they have with each other. Abby then sends a profanity, but thankfully, our language model picks it up and sends her a warning message. This does not get Sam to Sam as well. Abby rephrases, and they continue their conversation. Sam then receives a weird link from Abby. She decides that she does not want to talk to Abby anymore. Also, she decides that she wants to report Abby for her behavior. She indicates the reason why, as well as the specific text message. 
With that, the chat ends and they can begin looking for other partners once again. We have also conducted an initial pilot test with 40 students and we received very positive responses that they will continue using safe space. Next, for us, we are also currently in the talks with NGOs that provide mental health services. We plan to onboard them to provide counselling services on our platform, allowing the youth to have another option. Lastly, we plan to improve our profanity filter to better flag for toxic messages. With that, let's all create a safe space for Sam and for everyone. Thank you. All right. Thanks, safe space. Any questions from anyone here in the crowd? Thank you, team, for the awesome presentation. Um, so I have the questions that uh, in case the peer have a suicide tendency or uh, giving out negative messages, uh, are your app uh, have any directions on how to filter these problems? Thank you. Yeah, so okay, I think I can answer that. So uh, we understand that that would be one of the main problems with like, chat services uh, between use. So there was actually a feedback that we received from our pilot test, and that was why we introduced the machine learning model. So we understand that it's not a complete solution for such problems, but for MVP stage, what we could do now is to simply flag for offensive messages first, but perhaps in the future, through more user testing and more elaborate research, we can find out like, certain keywords that point to like, suicidal thoughts, and we can like, direct them to the NGOs that provide counselling sessions onto our platform. So that is another reason why we want to onboard uh, professional NGOs that can provide counselling services on our platform as well. So this will allow the youth to have two options depending on the current state they are in and what they would prefer. Yeah, I hope that answers your question. Thank you, very interesting. Um, can I ask, okay, this question sounds a bit loaded, but I really mean well. Um, what does success, uh, how do you define success for this? I know you are only given four weeks, but uh, as you are taking us through, and I thought the prototype execution was quite remarkable, given that you only have four weeks. Then it, it occurred to me that it sounds a bit like matching of friends, sounds like a matching of boy-girl relationship. So I'm trying to understand because, and let's say if I'm Sam, I'm going in to try this out. Uh, how many peers do you think I will need to sort of chat with to make sure that uh, over time, my mental health quotient will increase? So what does success, uh, how do you define success? It can be interim success, uh, you know, first level of success, and then like what the previous group mentioned, maybe if I give them a bit more time to develop further. Sorry, I, I know it's not a very straightforward question. Uh, so maybe I'll take this question. So uh, maybe because we just started, so the first measure of success would definitely be the user pickup rate. So, maybe for the first few months of deployment, what we want to see first is, we want to see a steady rise in the number of users that uses our chatbot. So then, as you mentioned also, uh, to view success, you can also maybe do like, uh, maybe we do a survey function, and then we can more or less get the feedback from the current users that can, that just very simple questions like, how do you feel about chatbot? What can we be what can we do to, be, to make it better in that sort, which is uh, kind of what we did for our pilot test. So maybe like, in the future, we'll be upscaling a lot. Yeah. So I guess that's how we will... <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I think Tyler brought up a very good point. So I think adding on to him, we can add in periodic surveys for our users. So I think it will be, allow us to collect very uh, good data that we can see whether a user is actually like, improving as time goes by. So we can collect like, stuff like their states, like maybe their happiness level, even though this isn't like the best idea we can think of now, but I think a periodic survey would be a very good indicator across our entire user base. All right, thanks, Safe Space. A round of applause for them, please. <laughs> so the next team prides themselves as being dynamic and on a mission for a sustainable future, one bite at a time. Presenting Team Sustainable. Mic test, mic test. Hi everyone, we are Team Sustainabite who aims to tackle the HO issue of food waste. So first thing first, why is it even an issue? 2 million kgs worth of household food waste per day, which 50% could have already been prevented. 
maybe that's too many kgs that people uh, that we cannot visualize so how about numbers 258 dollars per household also wasted that's around the same amount of cdc vouchers we get per year also so imagine just throwing away all your cdc vouchers so yeah the this also translates to a really costly problem for singapore as well so huge problem and we aim to tackle it right at the root we seek to find out why people even throw out food in the first place and coming from those we speak i don't know how much i actually need uh, i wanted to buy one but i end up buying five because it's only given me five and my favorite is i don't know when i'll cook so i'll just get more just in case so the problem is clear our smaller households are in a pickle about meal planning so how might we help our households buy the quantity of food that they really need? So we started finding uh, out where our people are actually getting their food from, which is your usual supermarkets and even online markets like Red Mart. And indeed, food are already packaged in fixed quantities meant for much bigger families. Now, is there any other places that people can buy food that is more flexible? Yep, the wet market. The items in the pasta is loosely packed and people already buy things, uh, how much that they already want. And yet we don't see many of our respondents, which are our younger adults, people at our ages, uh, at the wet market. And this is their wise. So usually I wake up when the wet market is already about to close. Um, it gets very overwhelming, like the smell, the noise. And also I don't know what to do. I just follow my parents when I'm there. So. Here's where we found an opportunity where we can get customized ingredients, learn exciting recipes as you try to adult, and support our local uncle and aunties at the Kampong Way. So introducing Sustainabite, a meal kit for the sustainable foodie in you. So let's say I want to cook lunch for my boyfriend and I. Uh, I will go on Sustainabite, browse and select what I want to eat. Mm, yeah, chakwe tiao sounds good uh, and very challenging for me to cook. So I'll just select for the two of us. And I don't like prawns, so I'll just remove the prawns and then send through my order. Once it's ready, I'll get notified and I'll go down and pick up and pay. As for uncles and aunties in the wet market, the order is already sent to them to their mobile phone via SMS and they'll just prepare the ingredients. And once it's ready, it will also be sent to them. Uh, they will also indicate via SMS. So with Sustainabite, you, we are able to plan meals faster and cheaper. Uh, we can reduce unnecessary food waste, as well as support our local uncles and aunties in the wet market with new business. Finally, where do we go on from here? Uh, we will definitely have to dig deeper into the intricacies of food mar uh, wet market operations, as well as establish partnerships with our merchant uh, organizations and associations. We will also want to further validate the needs and wants of this service uh, with a pilot market and a list of beta users and then do the good old iteration to make every version better. So start reducing food waste, uh, learn recipes in a safe space and support our wet market spaces. Thank you and we welcome any questions. All right, so thanks Sustainabite. So any bites of questions coming from the crowd here? Any bites? Oh. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is a question about your sort of your audience or your user you're imagining. You shared with us some uh, data about the sort of scale of the problem and the potential for the solution to impact. As you then shared the narrative of your product, it seemed like it was focused on a, um, a young audience, a particular kind of user, uh, maybe earlier in their life, trying to not only understand uh, food waste, but understand cooking. Um, maybe shopping for food ingredients and things. So what part of that uh, solution sort of problem space, the scale, applies to the audience you're, uh, you're focusing the, the product on? Yeah. Okay, so uh, we actually spoke to a few, uh, like eight different uh, people, and I think their priorities will definitely differ. Some of them are more sustainable. I think most of them are they might, may or may not even care about food waste in the first place. But a lot of the things like supporting local and also the, the fact that I get to learn new recipes and also like sort of getting into the more Singaporean culture is also one of the priorities. So the way that we restructured our solution is not only just focusing on the sustainability issue, but rather it being one of the prongs that we are actually focusing and 
more importantly, make a product that people are already susceptible to, like they are, they are receptive of. And then this sustainability becomes also like a bonus. And for those definitely who are already interested in the sustainability issue, they are already bought in by that point already. But this is something that I think it will reach to a much wider audience, especially in, in Singapore. understand the, the the sort of operational flow here like when you place an order like because the web market different people sell different things so like it goes to like it, it distributes the order amongst the different people in the web marketing to go pick it up from all the different people or like does it go to one person and they like collate for you and you just pick up at one point like what does that operational flow look like uh, that's a great question so for now right uh we don't we don't really have like what, what, we, what we plan is to have like one specific booth in the web market so if you really one coordinating all the orders for example that you, you see in the web market there are like orders for meat seafood vegetables so there'll be a one specific or uh, a merchant or uh at a booth right coordinating all these orders and then collect collect, collect everything and then you'll send that order to that specific merchants per se yeah so that's what we plan to do for now but right now we only have like a very pilot kind of launch in the uh, home market which is like uh it's like a very small market per se but it's, it's very hard for us to launch it to a large market that will require much more future iteration testing per se yeah how are you handling the payments like do the payments like flow automatically to the end merchants or did it flow to you and then you go pay in cash to the web merchant like the, the, the web market merchants I think currently our measure is to our our suggestion is to we can collect all the payments first and then we will tally all this all, all these payments and then we'll issue that out at the end of month per se. Yeah. So that's what we do plan to do. Yeah. Sorry, I'll just interject here. I think that's all the time that we have. Thank you so much, Sustainabite. Okay, uh you. round of applause. Uh Shazi, who do we have next? All right. So next we have a team of passionate people focused on fostering community culture and mental health. So passionate, some have went straight from completing national service. And need to build for good. All right, all right. Just remember. So today's SFD. So for those servicemen, past, present, future, happy SFD, everyone. So give it up to the passionate team, Team Interact SG. Like that. Hello everyone, I'm Max from Team Interact SG and these are my team members here. How's everyone feeling today? Good? Yes, that's awesome, man. Now, I'm going to bring your attention to these three photos here. What do these look like? These look like a social media feed, right? But is this actually an accurate depiction of our everyday lives? Well, obviously, the answer is no. And that's the problem with social media today. The problem with social media is that Social media is artificial and inauthentic. It doesn't accurately capture the meaning and the way we live our lives, the way we interact with others and make friends. And because of that, it has caused a lot of people to become feel lonely. And the impact isn't small. If we look at it actually, from our surveys that we conducted, 35% of Singaporeans experience loneliness at least once a week. And all of them agreed that this is a severe problem because it affected their work productivity as well as their mood and also for students, for those who are studying. So, therefore, we introduced a new platform called Interact SG, a platform that bridges the gap between people through their everyday lives and to foster communities in the process. So, how does the app look like? All they need to do is to scroll through the app, find an activity that they like. It could be something as simple as supper over dinner, or it could be drinks after work, perhaps. And then, they just need to click here to join the group. And then after that, they'll be led into a Telegram channel where they can meet with other peers who would like to meet on that particular day and they can enjoy the event. It's so simple. We are different from other social media platforms. There's no need for fancy bios or lengthy write-ups or even photos for things, for example, Tinder when you want to find a blind date or something like that. And at the same time, unlike other platforms like Meetup, our events are instantaneous, they're spontaneous, and they happen almost immediately. So, for example, supper tonight. There's no need to schedule weeks and months in advance, and this really shortens the time between someone is feeling lonely, perhaps, crave social interaction, and a time at, at which their need is fulfilled. And so, one of our beta testers, Andre, he's 21, male, 
and he has just finished his national service like us. He told us the problem that he had is that he found it hard to meet people from outside his social circle, and this platform really helped him. These are some of the plat these are some of the events that our beta testers have created. We have an IM showroom event. I'm not too sure what about it, about I'm not too sure what it is about, but from what I hear, it's a workshop about making earphones. Pretty interesting, as well as a simple supper at McDonald's, which I also attended. <laughs> so moving forward, we also intend to scale up our operations to include more partners and to reach out to even more people. So we intend to partner on the grassroots levels through uh, partnerships with RCs, NCs, and youth networks, for example, to spread our reach and as well as have collaborative opportunities in the form of volunteering events and also perhaps speed dating with SDM. So, what, what is this? This looks like a basketball. A very lonely basketball indeed. Don't be like this basketball. The ball is in your court. Join us today and experience what life can be with Interact SG. Please scan the QR code. Thank you. And now the ball is in my court because if you guys have any questions, raise up your hands and my mic voice will go around to you. Any questions? Anyone wants to get the ball to their court? Oh, yeah, finally. Hey, um, thank you for the presentation. I think uh, fundamentally, um, you, we may not be able to control who then accesses the app. So in my mind, how about for um, students who might be below a certain age and how might you uh, manage some of the potential um, predators uh, encounter, for example. I think it's very good that you want to link people up, but I think for the younger age group, how might you safeguard, uh, put in some of these safeguards? Thank you. Thank you very much for the question. This was actually something we uncovered in the course of our user testing. And then from the feedback, we also asked around what we thought would be the best solution. And what we've implemented so far actually is that whenever someone joins an event, there will be a safety notice. And then the safety notice will also tell them on what to look out for. For example, in the event that you're attending, if you see someone that's underage, you should urge him to leave and make a report to the moderators, for example. And on top of that, we also clearly state in our policy that people who are underage shouldn't come to, come to use our app or come to events because you may not know um, whether they are predators or something or people out there who might try to take advantage of them or something. And we are using this community approach because we feel that actually, in essence, Interact SG is a public space. And because of that, it's the community that's needed to safeguard and to keep watch over each other and to prevent such incidents from happening. And that's why also Interact SG um, actually is part of our policy that you're only allowed to host events in public spaces. You cannot have it in private areas. So therefore, I feel this risk is limited. Thank you. Any more questions for Interact SG? If not, I think that's all the time that we have. Round of applause for Interact SG. Thank you. Uh, Shazli, who do we have next? All right, next we have a team who is here to make complicated medical health reports clearer for patients. If it isn't clear who they are, their team MediClear. Good afternoon, everyone. We are team MediClear, and today I will be introducing our solution for empowering individuals to better understand their health reports. So, I'm sure that for a majority of people in this room, the whole process of going through many health checkups and receiving the accompanying re reports is not a common occurrence for us. However, for many individuals undergoing their initial diagnoses or managing chronic conditions, this is their reality. I have here a sample cholesterol lab test report, and as you can see, it is full of uh, complex medical jargon, which is difficult to understand and can result in the need to search up certain terms extensively online. Over the years, Singapore has been pushing for digitalization in its healthcare industry, and with it, a growing proportion of older Singaporean adults with limited health literacy. In fact, according to a study conducted this year, around 66% of older Singaporean adults face difficulties in reading, understanding, and using their medical health information. This then brings us to our problem statement. How can we empower individuals to better understand their health reports and to uh, make more informed decisions about their well-being? Well, our solution to this is MediClear, which presents information 
in a clear and concise manner, leaving out the complex medical jargons. For example, users can also use our features such as the reference ranges here and indications for concerning alerts to uh, better interpret their health conditions. Let us take a closer look at MediClear in action. So we currently run on a user web-based platform where they can effortlessly upload their health reports in PDF format. Subsequently, based on the health report received, MediClear will then generate a simplified report which uh, removes all of the complex medical jargon. And on the right-hand side, you can see that um, lifestyle management tips are also provided to encourage users uh, to alleviate certain health conditions that they may be facing. Beyond just Bill for Good 2023, we hope to increase the number of general health reports supported by MediClear and to integrate our functionality with the Health Hub application to facilitate ease of use and convenience amongst our users. Ultimately, our goal here is to uh, bridge the gap between the complex medical terms used in this industry as well as the layman's understanding. We hope that uh, as such, our platform can promote patient empowerment and enhance health literacy in Singapore. Thank you. All right. Thanks for making it clear, Team MediClear. So any questions to make it clear with Team MediClear? Yeah, because I think for this, because this is actually a prototype. So what we actually do is just to get our best basic implementation of it to work. So you can actually try it out on your devices. It's mediclear.vercel.app. Vercel, V-E-R-C-L dot A-P-P. Yep, so currently for our app itself, we only support uh, this cholesterol, cholesterol dot, the cholesterol report for, that can be downloaded from Health Hub. So we'll be implementing it furthermore to support other apps as well. So that's currently for now as a prototype. Yeah, perhaps I can uh, provide some elaboration on this. So in the healthcare industry, there are a lot of different types of test reports. There's specialist reports, screening reports. Within screening reports, there's category one, two, there's probably a category three as well. So category one is the type of report that we are targeting because it is for um, the general population. So stuff like pap smear, cholesterol tests, blood pressure tests, things that can be um, interpreted more um, easily. Yeah. Hi, very good afternoon. Sorry, I thought that um, over here. Yeah, firstly, congratulations on a very good problem statement and idea. Um, I, when we do user testing with a lot of the elderly on the ground, they really appreciate such um, you know, interface to help interpret this, their results uh, because they do share that they have difficulties trying to understand the reports. But they also share that they are actually more interested in getting a second opinion for scans, like even MRI scans or you know, like cancer, when they do some, um, they see some spots on their scans. Would there be some forms of, um, you know, advancing the current prototype to include CAT2, you know, reports? Yeah. Yeah. So um, to answer your question, actually, our application here, we don't want to provide a diagnosis for these patients, right? Because healthcare is a very heavily regulated industry. And after speaking to doctors, they mentioned that um, a lot of what we Publish here on our application, it should actually go through a doctor first. So it should be um, approved by a certified medical professional. So to answer your question, uh, it wouldn't really give them like a second opinion, like a diagnosis saying like, oh, if you, for example, have a lump, is it a swollen lymph node? Is it possibly a tumor? Uh, that's not what we aim to do. We just want them to uh, better understand their condition and perhaps learn some lifestyle management tips that they can use to help to alleviate certain things like hypertension, for example. Yes. Thank you, Team MediClear. Uh, I think that's all the time that we have. So round of applause for Team MediClear. Uh, Shaz, who's up next? All right. So the next team has a very, very cute name. I mean, I love the name. The team name is, oh, Ama Power. So Ama Power is a team. Okay, so my Chinese is like horrendous. I'm like, uh, okay, let me try again. Ama, is it? Is it Ama? You're asking the wrong person, oh, Chaz. Sorry. Please, okay, sorry. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so Team Ama Power is out here to work on helping the elderly get jobs. So with their product Dove Jobs, they are here to present all of it actually. So where is Team Ama Power? Where are you? Oh, you're here. All right. So give it a, give it a round of applause for Team Ama Power. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Nirbaya, and Leila here from Team Ama Power. Have you ever helped a senior to look for a job? Was it simple or frustrating? 
well, imagine a solution that helps the seniors to create a resume on their own. Introducing Dove Job, an AI-powered chatbot designed to empower seniors with instant resume generation. First, simply provide your basic information, then use the record uh, voice functions to share your job experience. There's a technical difficulties here. <laughs> yeah, so basically what happened is that this Ama is actually sharing uh, her job experience in Hokkien, I mean his, yeah. And what happened is that this functionality and uh, increase uh, accessibility by breaking the language barrier and reducing the need for typing is also great for those with poor eyesight. And just now you saw the resume, which they can send to uh, job portals via DoveJob as well. So we created DoveJob because we thought, how might we make it easier for seniors to get a job? So why this problem? Well, by 2030, a quarter of Singaporeans are going to be 65 or older. And the rising costs are driving these seniors back to work. But blue-collar seniors, uh, often not so literate uh, and not so well-to-do, are most vulnerable. So we conducted research and we even sticked out at Kopitiams to talk to more seniors. And we found that there are resources, even a job portal for seniors. But seniors found it very difficult to navigate without a laptop. They cannot create an account without an email and they don't know how to make resumes, so they can't actually apply. So the seniors find jobs through word of mouth. They prefer that informal interaction, and they are actually savvy with messaging apps. And thus, our chatbot DoveDrop was born. So we tested our chatbot DoveDrop with eight seniors. Uh, let's hear from one of them. Okay, so oh, we I can't think hear. <laughs> I think there is a te technical error. Uh, we tested it just now, it was fine, so. Is there a way that we can get okay. this out? <laughs> perhaps, perhaps later if we, if, we get, if we get this running, we can show it. Uh, but basically this senior is talking about how she actually used both English and Chinese at the same time. Um, and the, the chatbot was able to do a very good translation of it in her resume that she saw. So she was very impressed by it. So the seniors saw value in Dove job and we want to expand on that value. Senior told us that they prefer WhatsApp. So we, to increase accessibility, we want to have the bot there and add the multi-language support and text-to-speech feature. We also want to work with job portals on resume drop-off functionality and uh, to tap on their job matching capability. Although we designed Dove job for seniors, we hope it can benefit other less privileged group and the benefits can ripple beyond for greater public good. And with that, thank you so much, and we are open to questions. All right, thank team. thanks, Team Ama Power. So any questions for the team who's going to empower all of our Amas? Any? Any questions? Oh, oh any? Quick, quick, any questions? Okay, oh, wait, we have a question. How reliable is the is the is the text to speech stuff? So, like for English and Chinese, I'm sure it's fine. But for like you know all the different dialects and things like that, I'm sure they're not trained on Singaporean dialects and Singaporean accents. So, how effective are those? Yeah. So, unfortunately, the demo video didn't. Um, uh, there's no sound for just now, right? But in our demo, uh, the person who recorded the voice was actually speaking Hokkien. Yeah. So, uh, and. In fact, if let's say you were to test it with Hokkien and maybe a bit of English, because we understand that some job titles are harder to translate to that, right? Uh, the bot can actually understand that, uh, uh, the bot can actually uh, still put these uh, words uh, together and uh, have it in the resume. Yeah. So a question about once the resume is generated, like is there, is there a way to verify or like, you know, check on what has been generated? Okay, so actually that was in our initial flow, but because of uh, time, uh, you know, we, we, because of time constraint, we are not able to add that functionality because uh, that can add on to the technical difficulties for uh, this period. Yeah. Yes. For so. Yeah, given more time, definitely because I mean, 
both uh, me and Leila, we are UX designer. And one of the usability heuristics is to actually give the freedom for users to edit, uh, to, to uh, have control of the system, right? And definitely allowing seniors to edit the resume is, is one of the functions that we will push first. Right, and uh, time for anyone more question? Anyone has a question? All right. If not, thank you so much, Team Ama Power. Uh, do we have one more team left yes, for we have, this first half? Oh, yes, definitely. We have one more team just to round up the first half of presentations. So uh, let's see. If open government products ever, ever, ever have like multiple nemesis, like evil ones, so this could be one of them, presenting team closed anarchy products with their product Chatla. So yeah, my evil nemesis. Uh, what's this? Closed anarchy products, ha, please. Ha, ha. My test. Hi, we see us as more like cute brother, not nemesis. Yeah. Where's the sticker? Yeah. Okay. Hi, I'm Jay from Team Closed Anarchy Products. Today I'm going to introduce you an app, Chatla where you can be heard and supported. Let me start with this. Singaporeans are stressed. I mean, if not, how are you going to explain what is happening in Yishun, right? Just kidding. But seriously, do you know what appears on top when you search Singaporeans are on Google? Nasty. Singaporeans are nasty. And if you search this, they say Singaporeans are so damn rude. Why do people believe Singaporeans, such a good people, nasty and rude? No wonder. About one in three young people in Singapore have mental health symptoms. And 86% of them responded that they are stressed. So it's no surprising that stressed citizens sometimes can act nasty and rude. So what is the best solution to stress? Obviously. Taylor Swift Eras Tour, right? But it's not available to everybody. So we came up with the second best solution. Talking about themselves and supporting them emotionally. But did you know that Singapore ranks as the least emotional country in the world? They need to talk about themselves, but they never do. Why? Firstly, as an Asian, they never talk about their problems. The only problem they are allowed to talk is math problem, right? Secondly, personal therapy is too expensive. And lastly, government chatbots don't work. They need to listen to us, but they're giving some nasty advice, right? We solve this problem with AI. Imagine a chatbot and friends who are available anytime, who understand you who listen you. That is what Chatla is, an AI-powered platform where you can literally just Chatla. Let's see how it works with video. In Chatla, you can type your problems and AI will analyze your problems and match with similar people. On TGPT, we will listen to you and support you. As you type your problems, they will listen and support you. You can even get comments from actual people who's similar to you. And yeah, don't worry, bad comments will be moderated. So you can see no toxicity in Chetla. You can give cheering comments to other people. So here, you're not only supported, but also you support other people. Yep, you can try it now. Thank you. All right, yeah. thanks, Close Anarchy Products with the logo, which is suspiciously familiar to my employers. <laughs> uh, and yes, hopefully all of you manifest good enough to get your Taylor Swift tickets. Uh, all right, so we are opening the floor for questions. 
Great job, guys. <clears throat> My question is, how is this different from all of the other platforms out there that sold ring chat? Like, you have your instant messages, you have your chat on Instagram, chat on social media, yeah. you have your Reddit platforms. Yeah. How is this different? Yeah. So, what we found from user survey is that they need anonymity. They, they don't want to talk about their problems to close people. So, that these platforms uh, offers anonymity first. And then also, like complete anonymous platform lacks like humane or social interaction. Imagine like online community. There's no interaction or humane response. But here, we are matching with similar people with AI. So like, let's say if you're lonely, you can see other, other people who are also feeling lonely. So there's like a like social connection between them and us. Yeah. Any other questions? No for a crowd. Uh, and uh, okay. I'm finding out actually Yeah. But, um, if I if some other youth feels better talking to someone just a few years older. Yeah, that's definitely um. We yeah, can, yeah, other archetypes, is it? Uh, we can plan it, but for now we are only supporting um Auntie, Auntie. GPT, but ah, we can I say see. like Uncle GPT, oh. Ama, Akong. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. A auntie easier lah because uncle. I think yeah. the the young girls cannot chat with. Yeah. Uncle. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm still trying. Not too bad. Interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. So, Shaz, I think that rounds off our first half of pitches. Yeah, right? yeah, it was pretty exciting. There was like anti GPT now. Like, yeah. how many GPTs are there? There's, there's a lot. Yeah, I cannot keep track. Like anti GPT, some other GPT. There's that government GPT too. Oh, like, right, right. Oh, is wow. it called Pear? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Is it called Pear? Is it Pear? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, it that? is called Pear. Yeah. Did somebody build that? I think it's, it's us. Oh, is it us? Oh, wow. wow. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Okay, right. great. Yeah. Can... Give me a high five, man. High five. Yeah, high five. High five. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we are halfway through um, and hope you guys have been enjoying. Um, but before we go into our second half, we wanted to give you guys a glimpse of what the experience has been like for our builders. So if you give us a second, we'll be playing uh, a video of the past month. So um, yep, yeah, hold on one second. us coming to this hackathon where we are building for public good. I think this is a very good opportunity to hone into using our skills. Welcome to Yeah, yeah, We're going to gather the most soft people and motivate the people who want to try and make society better. Hopefully, we, we, we do get to uh, build something good. Uh, winning or not, it's not that important to me. Yeah. Are you guys confident that you're going to win? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I guess from a community perspective, it's always useful to have like an extra pair of eyes to look at the issue and try to think of a solution. Uh, for me personally, I really love the social aspect of the, the hackathon. Hello, we are Team Mediclear. Our team name is called Pivot Pals. My team name is Smart Cut. Team Noteflow. Team Scan Shield. I'm a power, but also anchor. Our problem statement that we're trying to solve is uh, helping elderly find a job that fits their needs. I think Success Wild Group uh, is really just coming up with a solution that um, our target audience, which is like the elderly and the senior, will actually use and it's something that they will find easy to use as well. I think that's, that's really as simple as that. We're trying to solve the issue of scam QR codes using the solution of uh, a proprietary government-provided scanner app that is able to scan any QR code and is able to tell whether a QR code is safe, unverified, or a scam. No matter what kind of ideas come out from this program, uh, I think the fact that we get to validate these uh, ideas or problems or solutions uh, is going to be very important. It's very exciting, yeah, because the value that we're bringing is really something that is priceless. Awesome! So um, now we're about to kick off our second half of pitching. Um, to start off, we have Team Pivot Pals to talk about their project, Basecamp. So as career switchers themselves, uh, Team Pivot Pals are here to help their fellow career switchers transform what can sometimes be a frustrating journey into a journey of joy and self-discovery. So introducing Team Pivot Pals. Give us one second while we work out some technical difficulties. Yeah. 
One and a half years. That was how long it took for me to career switch. It was not easy, and there were many times when I felt like giving up. Good afternoon all. My name is Wei Rong. This is Yan Hao, and today we'll be discussing the mental burden faced by career switchers. So career switching is like scaling a mountain alone. It is frustrating and emotionally exhausting. Self-doubt is common, and it can feel as though nobody really understands your situation. Now, why is this important? Millennials and Gen Zs are increasingly seeking meaning and fulfillment in their careers. Yet, uh, we found that there were limited resources targeted at providing mental support to career switchers. We believe that more needs to be done. Through our user interviews, we uncovered two key problems. When I was career switching, I was fortunate enough to have a friend who was going through the same journey as me. I felt comfort in being able to share my frustrations with her and that she could truly, truly relate to what I was going through. This was an assurance that my family and friends could not have provided as they did not see or even understand the emotional work behind the scenes. Secondly, job, so job searching for career switches is like shouting into a void. You're constantly hoping, hoping for a response and hoping for somebody to take a chance on you. The burnout from this process can be overwhelming. With all this uncertainty, it's no surprise that 88% of the career switches we interviewed felt frustration at the rejections that they faced. And so we thought, how might we empower career switchers by providing them the mental support to support them through their journey? Introducing Basecamp, a platform that aims to consolidate the pool of career switchers and help manage their negative emotions in three ways, through a visual and interactive board, a chat function, as well as benefits and activities. So meet Sam. He's a 28-year-old career switcher who is frustrated with the job search. With Kampong Bot, Sam can simply use an emoji, write a line or two about why he's feeling as such, and be encouraged by his peers. Through this, we hope it fosters a sense of unity, letting Sam know that he isn't alone. For a deeper connection, Sam can reach out to the campfire chat, where he will be matched with other peers and other mentors based on their similar industry interests. In this platform, they can all exchange ideas, mentorship, and guidance. And finally, they can all leverage on the perks they'll be given to manage the, they are burnt out from the job hunting purpose. So currently, we have already spoken to seven interested partners, of which the main purpose of this is simply to encourage people like Sam to just step out of their house and not let negative emotions consume them. And so in the short term, we aim to provide targeted assistance to people like Sam, where the data collected can then be used for policy making in the near future. In the next three to six months, we'll be conducting more user testing, refinement of our solution, and of course, partnership with government agencies as well as book, uh, book camps, and eventually reach out to social media outlets such as the podcast for mental health thing. And so, all in all, our vision is to create a safe space for career switchers, and we do so by easing their frustrations through the community support. So if you believe in us, let us join hand to create a safe space for these career switchers where they can rest and recharge before they continue their career switching climb. Thank you, and feel free to try out our product. Awesome. Thank you so much, Team Pivot Pals. Uh, so it's time for Q&A. Any questions for our Pivot Pals team? Just raise your hand. Any questions? Don't be shy. Um, maybe I have a question. Um, I guess because you guys are all career switchers yourselves, right? Soon to be for me. Oh, soon to be. Stop okay. <laughs> so how do you expect that this product will help you in this journey? Um, personally, because um, I mean, I just resigned just last week, last, so soon to be. But uh, I felt like um, because I really don't know what I really want to do in my life right now. So I felt like through this product, I can find people of similar interests where we can all navigate this path of uncertainty and hopefully, one day, someone might, might be like a guardian angel. They'll probably tell me, hey, maybe you're interested in this. And that was also how I came to know about this program also. Like a friend of mine was like, hey, I think, I think you might be interested in this. And then I was like, yeah, sure, I'll give you a try. So here I am. 
Awesome. Are you looking for a job? You already have one. You wanna, I'm still looking. You want to plug? Okay. I'm you want to plug? <laughs> <laughs> Free publicity. Um, any other questions for Team Pivot Pals? Oh yes. What do, what do you view as a successful outcome here, here? Is it about connecting people with the common, you know, with this common journey, or it's about switching into the new job? Maybe you could uh, clarify where you see the kind of end success for your idea. Yeah. Mm. Thank you for the great question. So for us, we actually talk about the success matrix. And of course, we want people to actually enter this. And so we are actually looking at the user uptake. But of course, our end goal is to let these people exit this whole entire program. So um, that is something which uh, we are still working on. And would you like to add? Um, so we kind of envision Basecamp to be a funnel, mm. right? So for example, even if you've been through boot camps or programs, at the end of the day, this does not guarantee you a job. So for myself, I went through a boot camp. And at the end of the day, even with the boot camp and you know, a case study project, I still had to go through like three or four months worth of you know, stalking it out, sending CVs, you know, the usual stuff that you have to do. And I faced countless rejections. So even if you do have financial assistance or even you know, grants to help you with that, there is a gap where you know, before you land a job, you need emotional support, right? Because at the end of the day, when you're applying for jobs at home, you can kind of spiral because you, know, you don't feel, you feel guilty if you're not doing anything. You want to wrestle back control in your life. Yeah, so I think that plugs the gap. Basecamp plugs this gap. And ho hopefully, you know, when they are able to find a job, eventually they can leave the platform and you know, we would count that as a success metric as well. So to add on to that is also talking about uh, their feedback. How do you feel of this experience? Because something so, something which can't be really quantified is, as of now, is something which we are still figuring out. And hopefully we'll still figure out in the near future. All right. Thanks, Pivot Pals. And good luck for your job you. search. Anyone here hiring? Yeah. Okay, so Sarah, who's up next? Um, next, we have Team MS, who are here to offer their neighborhood residents a more accessible and personalized channel to access important neighborhood announcements with their product, No Liao. So, round of applause for Team MS. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Han, and together with me, Wen Yu and Catherine, we are Team MS. This is me and my son. We were in a taxi to a hotel to escape the drilling noise from the neighbor upstairs. 30 minutes before this, I was in the office. The nanny called me and asked, why is there drilling happening? And I told her, oops, I didn't know the drilling starts today. I had to cancel all my meetings and left office immediately. Frustrating situations like mine are more common than we think. According to our recent survey conducted by Smart Nation office with HDB residents, Four out of 10 respondents had negative experience with residential changes due to misannouncements. And for those who got affected, 60% felt moderate to high inconvenience with their days, be it missing doctor appointments or coming home to see cockroaches in your bean shoots. Now, what are missing in these announcements? The residents shared with us that they had issues with the digital bots, too fast to read, print, too small to read limited language options, and no easy way to remember the event dates. And we think that our team could improve the situations. Introduce NOLEL, a centralized platform for announcements uh, categorized by residential zones, publicly accessible by residents, and managed by relevant government stakeholders. We put NOLEL to test with Madame Ko. The first thing she said is actually too small, cannot see. That's why she increases the font size and now she can see the list of announcements in her blog. Each announcement is broken down into bite-sized information like recommended actions, date time, for easy reading and easy filtering. They also have option to share links with family members and mark to your calendar. But back to Madame Ko, she's 70 years old and she's not tech savvy. So we, wanted to, we want to make it even more accessible to her by sending the announcement directly to her phone via Telegram in our chatbot. And now she can get updated within a click. Like this. We also set up an admin view, and this is how an announcement is created. Our email exchange with Tampanese Central Constituency Director reveals that announcements today are managed by different stakeholders. So it's important for the admin system to have a clear approval process for the government stakeholders to ensure one source of truth for residents. And we want to continue this effort beyond the hackathon. 
we want to make it even more accessible for residents with multiple language options, integrating with apps like Health365 for event registration or WhatsApp, and of course, to improve the admin experience overall. With Nolel, we, our team strongly believes that residents like me or Madame Ko will be more informed and in making timely arrangements for our life. Thank you. Thanks so much, Team MS. Any questions for Team MS? Yes? This is a very interesting prototype. Can I ask, um, uh, over time, more and more organizations will come to you. So are you working only with government agencies, um, VWO, social service agency, and a lot of them will persuade you and say that what they are trying to pitch to you or market will be very beneficial to the residents. So where do you draw the line? Ah, okay. So uh, thanks for your question. So our, um, our vision is this platform has to be a one source of truth for all the residents. So we want to ensure that whoever comes in, we need to have a clear um, final, final approval who comes in uh, and uh, who will be the final approval of, of, of these uh, announcements. So I think it's, it's not on the platform side, but it's more on the um, stakeho uh, stakeholders alignment side that we need to agree on who is the process. Yeah. Any other questions for Team MS? Any more questions? Okay, if no more questions, thank you so much, Team thank MS. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have Team Rocket, featuring four alumni from Rocket Academy's Software Engineering Bootcamp and a, quote, astronaut-level software engineer. Excited to hear what they'll be launching today. So round of applause for Team Rocket. Hello, everyone. We're Team Rocket. My name is Ya Bing. So just a show of hands, how many of you have received scam messages within the past year? Okay, that's almost everyone, which is not surprising. So last year alone, we lost more than $660 million to scammers. What was more surprising was that over 60% of victims were young people like us in this room today. This means no matter how well-educated, no matter how digitally savvy, we are not safe from scams. While Scam Shield already offers urgently needed protection, we still need to address this problem at its root. Scams still reach people. Hence, the more vigilant we are, the less effective the scams. That's why our team has been building Scam or Not. It's a fun, simple, and educational game that tries to make you better at recognizing scams. So please feel free to follow along. The rules are really simple. You will see a message. It's either a scam or it's not a scam. With each selection, you will get to understand your vulnerabilities. You can learn from your mistakes. You will also see how you do, and you're strongly encouraged to hit the share button. Now, with scam or not, we're trying to achieve two outcomes. So first, we want our players to know a scam when they see one, so that they don't fall for the real scams out there in the real world. And the impact will be multiplied when you protect not only yourselves, but also your family and your friends. And second, we track how many people get each question right or wrong, so we can share this data with government agencies fighting scams, so you can focus your limited resources on the more dangerous types of scams. Scam or not has tremendous future potential. Now, to drive continuous engagement, we plan to seed new questions from time to time based on the latest and real life scam examples. We can even customize the questions to the player. And with simple styling changes, we can simulate not only the SMS UI, we can also simulate messaging platforms like WhatsApp and Telegram. And finally, the more people who play, the more impact we will have. So beyond traditional marketing, we have two ideas on how we can drive long-term adoption. First, we can consider integrating Scam or Not into Scam Shield, so we can get access to the hundreds of thousands of existing users. And finally, we can also make use of the existing ground touch points like CCs, RCs, and our SG Digital Ambassadors, 
so that we can bring this game to the masses, even elderly, so that everyone can play and benefit. Now, thank you for playing for the public good. Now, Ted and I will take your questions. Awesome, round of applause for Team Rocket. Any questions? Yes, in the back? Uh, Jiao, where are you at? Oh, okay, oh, sorry, yes. Yeah, I do have a question. Great job, guys. I think this is, this is super cool. Um, have you guys thought about what are some of the motivations or hooks um, to get people to actually play the game? Because um, from the demo itself, it feels like a very simple um, binary kind of question. So it's either one or zero. But have you thought about what are some of the hooks that will make them play the game a little bit longer, um, share it with their friends, or share the results with other people because of something? Have you, thought, have you guys thought about that? Uh, yeah, I think this is the most common uh, piece of feedback, uh, and it, it usually comes with the suggestion of maybe there can be like a voucher if you <laughs> if you play the game. Uh, but I think maybe we can break it down into uh, two questions. One is uh, why would I come and play this game in the first place, which I think is a an easier question because uh, people tend to like to do a quiz. Uh, what dessert are you? Uh, what uh, Harry Potter character are you? Uh, the, the harder question is, uh, how do we get them to come back? Uh, if we want to keep this up to date with uh, newer and more sophisticated forms of scams, uh, how can we get, get people to come back and play the same game uh, again? So that will be one of the uh, important questions for us to, to think about. Uh, also, if we think about this as a sort of uh, inoculation, uh, how long from the moment that you play is it effective? Uh, will, it, will it help you identify scams for the next uh, month or the next year? Uh, these are questions that we don't know, but that we want to look into uh, moving forward. Awesome. Thank you so much. I think that's all the time that we have. Sorry, Sam. <laughs> um, yeah, round of applause again for Team Rocket. Who do we have up next? Up next, we have SmartCart, a team on a mission to combat the edible enemy of food waste by cooking up some tech magic. I'm excited to hear what other food puns they have in store for us and also what they've been building. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Randall from SmartCart. Now, um, there we go. Okay, Singaporeans love food, but our love for food comes with a hidden cost. So a study done by the Singapore Environment Council and Deloitte found that Singaporean households discard uh, an estimated $342 million per year. Um, breaking it down, that's about 250, uh, 58 per household per year. Or you can think of it as throwing away two bowls of rice per household every single day. Now, why is that? Well, we surveyed 80 participants. We also interviewed um, six participants, and we found that it comes down to three reasons. So this is uh, for the grocery shopping habits. Uh, people forget what they already have. They wrongly estimate uh, what they need for the household, and they find it very hard to keep track of when their food expires. So we ask ourselves, how might we help Singaporeans avoid overbuying groceries so that we reduce food waste? And so we present to you SmartCart a solution aimed at helping you to track your inventory, to plan for your next grocery trip, and to coordinate with your household on a shared platform. So imagine this, it's a Sunday morning, 8 a.m., and I get a notification on my phone that says, your spring onions and apples will spoil this week. I didn't realize I have apples because my mom bought them, but since it's 8 a.m., I'm going to have breakfast soon, I'll have an apple as well. Um, so as I'm having my apple for breakfast, I take a look at SmartCart. On the first tab, the home tab, I see... Uh, at the top, my groceries that I'm going to finish this week, one of them is my spring onions, which will expire tomorrow. So, you know, maybe I'll have it for lunch later. And then I scroll down and I see um, a section that tells me I wasted a little bit of food this past month, a uh, quarter jar of peanut butter and two slices of bread. So maybe when I do my grocery shopping, I'll get a bit less of those or the substitutes. Um, speaking of grocery shopping, Sunday is also my grocery shopping day. So I check my inventory, which is the second tab, to see what I already have. Definitely more than enough chicken thigh for the week. Um, but my teriyaki sauce is running a bit low, so I will add that to my to buy list, which is the third tab. So I press on to buy, press the little plus button there, and add um, an item, my teriyaki sauce, I hit the save button, 
and now it appears in my to-buy list together with other items that my family members have added in during the week. And so before I even get to the supermarket, I know exactly what I need to buy. So um, after buying the items, so let's say the teriyaki sauce, I press on it and then I tap on transfer to inventory and it moves straight to my inventory and I can keep track of it for the rest of the week. So this is smart card. Um, Thank you for your time and we're open for questions now. Awesome, round of applause for Smart Cart. Any questions from the floor or from our judges? Uh, yes, Thor in the back. Hey, uh, that's great. I was wondering, are you also recommending recipes of like the stuff I have in my inventory? Uh, no, we, that, that's for another group to settle. Ah, okay. yeah. We're working more on coordinating with the family. I think gotcha. that is completely doable, but it will probably come in as like a future improvement. Yeah. Um, definitely, we need like these basic features first. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, if no more questions, and oh, sorry, sorry, one more question. I'm curious how you tr track the, um, like when the bottle usage is done with the teriyaki sauce, how do you know like one quarter is left? Like does someone have to manually enter the usage? Uh, yeah, I guess for now, yeah, you, you would have to manually key in. I think maybe a good practice would be, say, uh, twice a week to, to do a check on the stuff that you've used and update your inventory. Yeah, it's a little bit um, more manual at the moment. Yeah. I think also to reduce like the amount of manual entries that you need, we do want to implement like a scan receipt function so that you can, on purchasing, then you can scan your receipt and you know how much you've bought and you're really go into your inventory but currently I guess like a challenge that we are facing is how do we like make the process of reducing the items in your inventory much easier so that can definitely be helped yeah all right thanks smart card so yeah a round of applause for smart card thank, thank you. you thank you all right so I think Chaz we only have two more presentations left yeah two more so who's next so next up we have note flow who are determined to help school counselors provide high quality care for their students. So round of applause for Team NoteFlow. Test. Good afternoon. So I used to be a secondary school teacher, so I worked very closely with our school counselors. They're the only trained mental health professionals supporting our students on the front line. Yet, like teachers, they wear many hats and they don't have enough time to support all the students who need them. So our team joined Built for Good for one simple reason. We want to help counselors save time to improve the quality of care for their students. To find out more about their current working practices, we conducted in-depth user interviews and we found one pain point that was really quite surprising. Our counselors currently take a long time to write their case notes. And these case notes are important because they track a student's progress, history, and interventions. When they don't have time to write case notes, they often forget what their students have told them in the sessions. And this makes it impossible for them to set goals, monitor progress, and establish treatment plans. So in short, writing quality case notes is both important and time consuming. And that's why we've built NoteFlow to help. So here's how it works. Uh, counselors can access the app via their mobile phone, where they can start recording the counseling session with the student. When they end the recording, the audio file will be sent directly to our server, where our AI assistant will take care of the rest. NoteFlow will automatically generate the transcript, the clinical case notes, as well as a factual summary. The case notes are written in a clinical format, but the system is flexible and the user can configure the output according to different templates, allowing us to cater this to school counselors from all schools easily. Now we build NoteFlow to document case notes, but they can actually perform any task related to natural language. For example, they can ask our AI assistant for help in conceptualizing more complex cases or to suggest interventions to work off. We have done our user acceptance tests and we are proud to say that not only are our counselors satisfied with the quality of notes generated, but they estimate that NoteFlow will help them document their case notes up to six times as fast as what they're currently doing. 
Currently, NodeFlow is built on Google Cloud, but because we're dealing with confidential counseling information, we believe that widespread adoption across schools will require even stronger layer of security. That is why we intend to migrate to the government commercial cloud or to use MOE's own on-prem service and to only use large language models that have secure options. So this will allow us to build both a custom and safe solution for schools as compared to simply using an off-the-shelf alternative. We currently already have counselors eager to test out the pilot, and we plan to reach out to guidance branch to get some input on how we may further scale up the user testing. We're incredibly excited to see what school counselors will do with our app, and we hope that the time saved can be returned to the people who truly matter, our students. Thank you. Awesome, thank you so much, Team NoteFlow. Any questions for the team? Any questions from our audience or our judging panel? And everyone, feel free to scan. How much, like, I mean, I presume your session is pretty long, right? Like, say, an hour conversation. Like, is it able to accurately track no. and summarize an oh, entire yes, hour? Yes, yes. We've, in fact, tried even one hour, 45 minutes, going beyond the uh, 45, uh, one hour barrier. How much editing, like, of the generated notes did, does, do the, the counselors need to do? Yeah, so we have um, done the user testing. So the mental model that they shared with us when writing the case notes, there are two parts to it. So there's the process notes, which is the more, you can think of it as the more menial part, where it's really about details that have been mentioned in the interview. And then there's the higher order kind of knowledge work that has to do with planning of interventions. So for the process notes part, uh, we, have, we have got it, even with the MVP, it's, it's, uh, it's passed. They don't need to edit that. For the interventions, it's a bit trickier. So um, because counselors, they have different kind of modalities and it's a more human-centered part of the work. So that part, we are trying to fine tune the AI assistant to be able to act as at, at a professional level, basically, such that they can bounce ideas off effectively. Yeah. Awesome, thanks so much. A round of applause for Team NoteFlow. Uh, thank you so much. So we have one final team left. Um, last but not least, we have Team Renaissance, who are composed of NUS students who were connected through Friends of Friends. So let's hear how they're tackling the thorny problem of recycling. Round of applause for uh, Team Renaissance. So hi everyone, I'm Zachary and this is Ting Room, our product designer. And we are from Team Renaissance. And today we are here to talk trash. Why? Because recycling trash in Singapore is hard. We did a user survey of over 95 participants. 59% of them are unsure what can be recycled. And 62% of them can't find recycling bins on the go. This is also a problem at the agency level. NEA shares that they want to reach a domestic recycling rate of 30% in 2030. And for reference, it took 17 years. It took 17 years to hit the peak of 22% in 2018. So to we have to achieve a similar increase in just one third of the time. And if we don't, we'll get trashed, literally. Pulau Samaka will run out of landfill space by 2035. And we can't expect radical results by doing the things we've, we've been doing before. And hence, our team, up, our team came up with a solution. Trash Away, the Google Maps for recycling bins. It provides an easy way for you to check recycling information and also find nearby recycling bins. And here's how it works. So first, you scan the trash to find out how you recycle your item. Then, our app will simply find the nearest recycling bin for you so you can easily head there to recycle your item. And so for this hackathon, we decided to focus on a very small and well-defined problem in the discovery stage of the recycling user journey. And this, is help, this helps us to raise awareness and also garner interest in recycling in Singapore as a whole. And user testing so far has been very positive, with 8 out of 10 users really excited to use our product in the future. And this indicates a very high return on investment, even though we have a very short development time frame for this product. And Trash Away tries to innovate by using a mix of both man and machine to revolutionize recycling in Singapore. So we have the barcode scanning to identify items, and in future iterations, we plan to use object detection and AI to identify items without barcodes as well. And if all these fails, we also have manual input using crowdsourcing to help us build a reliable data set of all the recyclables in Singapore. And we believe that a combination of these would create a very unique approach to make Trash Away the go-to recycling app in Singapore. And so far, our working prototype proves that our solution is actually feasible. And we believe that building a data set of recyclables and also recycling bins will allow us to differentiate from our competition as well. And we don't, see any, we don't foresee any problems in scaling our product. And we are very confident that we will be able to push this product to life soon. Yeah. 
And so before I end off, I would like to leave you with a saying, where there's a will, there's a trash away. So please, please try our app using the QR code or the link below. And I think my team has some uh, items for you to try to scan for the judges and for anyone in the room as well. Yeah. Wow, yeah, interactive. We can, we can do that while taking questions. Awesome. Any questions for our last team today? Oh. Yeah. Everyone's busy scanning for those of you on our live stream. Please try. Any questions? Yes, in the back? Yeah, hi. Um, yeah, thanks for the, the presentation. Yeah, I just want, wanted to find out like, how actionable is this like solution in a sense that because like you mentioned that Singapore has one of the like in the past decade it's like one, one of one of the lowest like re recycling rates right then don't you think that the, the fundamental problem here is more of like our practices and our, and our habits rather than just introducing like an app to like let, let people know about oh I have a network of like recycling bins but then how do you like change the fundamental habits and, and behaviors of our, our population that can actually change the whole recycling like app? Yeah this drive here. So thank you for the question. So actually there was a report that actually mentioned that actually um, more than 60% of Singaporeans do recycle regularly. And through our user survey, we also uh, found out that uh, that number really did correlate with our respondents. And we also surveyed like why these people recycle. And most of them did answer that uh, because of the environmental impact. So we we as Singaporeans do actually have the intent to recycle, but it's just that they meet pain points and challenges. And these are the opportunities that we identified and wanted to work on. So two key pain points that we mentioned in our presentation was that uh, Singaporeans don't know what they can recycle, how they can, how they can recycle, and where they can recycle. And our app does target those. So what we want to do is really bring Singaporeans to the bins and encourage recycling on the go. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, one question. Yeah. Have you discussed with NEA on how they can support you? Oh yeah. So uh, we have some. We Do have, have some... NEA people here. Just wondering. I think maybe NEA? online. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we have some email correspondence with NEA, and actually they share with us a lot of problems that they were facing recycling. And one of them is the contamination problem. So that's why we tried to. Uh, focus on the fact that you can identify items using barcodes. This will help us to identify what's the ways that we can recycle these products. Mm -hmm. And I think it, it's, it's really useful because there are some products like, for example, cup noodles. You imagine there's the paper lid, but there's also the plastic cup. So what do you do with these products? I think it'll be really useful for them to combat this contamination problem because it gives a very detailed way of showing how to be how to recycle each and every product in Singapore. To the add, reason, the re, sorry, go ahead. Uh, to add on, our product is meant to be a complementary thing to uh, NEA's initiatives. Right. So one of those is the recycle and save uh, reverse vending machine, where people can like deposit their bottles and cans, and then get uh, some like non monetary incentives, like uh, capital star uh, points or vouchers. So it. And there was this article that said that, uh, well, this is a good initiative. Initiative People are quite concerned they can't find the bins, the machines, right? So our app is, uh, could be potentially like a good complementary product to bring people to these vending machines. Yeah, I, I was not testing you. I'm just oh. suggesting, oh. suggesting <laughs> that uh, you have an interesting and compelling prototype. So next time when you're in NEA, be a bit more push the envelope a bit, you know, and tell them that, you know, it's a way for you to gamify this thing, right? So that the, uh, Singaporeans, young and old, will want to, and, and actually it's like a game. And as they do more and more, you know, you, you just want to, in order to shape a desirable behavior, you have to dangle some carrot um, for fun, for, as, a, as a game reward, etc. Oh, try this. All the best. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Round of applause for our last team, Renaissance. Yeah, so uh, I think we're done, Shaz. What's up next? Oh, okay. So uh, I've prepared an entire speech for this. So 13 teams have presented. Three teams walk away with $10,000 to go and develop their products further. So to know who walk away with those prizes, our dear team of judges will need to adjourn to decide. So for those who are here in person, we have prepared refreshments outside. While those online, please come back at around 4.10 and we'll continue on with today's program. So see you guys. Awesome. See you guys in a few minutes.
So this kind of thing will actually help them a lot to actually just create a resume. So this kind of thing.
，我顶摆先啊，看到伊边做保安的，我做了一年，我会晓登记来的车，有时去也去行行顺顺，看有时的物件发生无，看保安的 CCTV， 我会使进修。我顶摆是拿昆都一边。So this kind of thing will actually help them a lot to actually just create a resume on the spot, just using voice. Based on uh, my answer, I actually use mix of English and, and Mandarin to, to answer then uh, what the outcome of the translation is very accurate. Quite impressed. <laughs> Hello, I'm from Team Noteflow. I am from Team ScanShield. And our group is Ama Power. The problem that we are looking at is that um, school counsellors today, they are very busy and they may not have um, enough time to always document their case notes in detail. We are trying to solve the issue of scam QR codes using the solution of uh, a proprietary government provided scanner app that is able to scan any QR code is able to tell whether a QR code is safe, unverified, or a scam. Our problem statement that we're trying to solve is uh, helping elderly find a job that fits their needs. They face a lot of challenges and difficulties, so we want to help make that process easier for them. So success for us will be creating a product that school counsellors will be able to adopt in their workflow seamlessly that will um, help them to save time um, that is well received by them. We have decided to focus on the user, focus on their needs first, get the traction there and then focus on the other features that we have planned for the future. I think success for our group uh, is really just coming up with a solution that um, our target audience, which is like the elderly and the senior, were actually used and it's something that they will find easy to use as well. I think that's, that's really as simple as that. Hello, we are Team Medicare. Our team name is called Pivot Pals. My team name is Smart Cut. We are looking to empower individuals to gain a better understanding of their health conditions so that they can actually make more informed decisions in this area. We're trying to address the issue of how do we um, reduce food wastage by avoiding overbuying. We're essentially trying to solve the problem of career transitioners, you know, facing a lot of issues, frustrations along their career switching process. Current medical reports that are provided are actually very, very difficult to understand because they're all in technical terms. So we want to simplify it for them so that they don't have to go through the trouble of Googling everything themselves. Three out of five of us are actually career switchers. So we kind of understand firsthand the troubles we go through and the you know frustrations and anxiety along the way. So we hope by you know building this platform, this uh, foundation uh, for future generations to come, uh, it will definitely help the, you know, the public. So what success looks like is that uh, people have a better idea of what they have in their inventory and so when they go out um, to buy stuff, they also uh, don't end up overbuying and that helps to reduce the impact on um, both the environment and also on their own wallets.
Hello, I'm from Team Noteflow. I am from Team Scanshield. And our group is Ama Power. The problem that we are looking at is that um, school counsellors today, they are very busy and they may not have um, enough time to always document their case notes in detail. We are trying to solve the issue of scam QR codes using the solution of uh, a proprietary government-provided scanner app that is able to scan any QR code and is able to tell whether a QR code is safe, unverified or a scam. Our problem statement that we're trying to solve is uh, helping elderly find a job that fits their needs. They face a lot of challenges and difficulties, so we want to help make that process easier for them. So success for us will be creating a product that school counsellors will be able to adopt in their workflow seamlessly that will um, help them to save time um, that is well received by them. We have decided to focus on the user, focus on their needs first, get the traction there and then focus on the other features that we have planned for the future. I think success for our group uh, is really just coming up with a solution that um, our target audience, which is like the LED and the senior, were actually used and it's something that they will find easy to use as well. I think that's, that's really as simple as that. Hello, we are Team Medicare. Our team name is called Pivot Pals. My team name is Smart Cut. We are looking to empower individuals to gain a better understanding of their health conditions so that they can actually make more informed decisions in this area. We're trying to address the issue of how do we um, reduce food wastage by avoiding overbuying. We are essentially trying to solve the problem of career transitioners, you know, facing a lot of issues, frustrations along their career switching process. Current medical reports that are provided are actually very, very difficult to understand because they're all in technical terms. So we want to simplify it for them so that they don't have to go through the trouble of Googling everything themselves. Three out of five of us are actually career switchers. So we kind of understand firsthand the troubles we go through and the you know frustrations and anxiety along the way. So we hope by you know building this platform, this uh, foundation uh, for future generations to come, uh, it will definitely help the, you know, the public. So what success looks like is that uh, people have a better idea of what they have in their inventory. And so when they go out um, to buy stuff, they also uh, don't end up overbuying. And that helps to reduce the impact on um, both the environment and also on their own wallets. Hello. Hi, everybody. Um, if you could make your way back to the auditorium, we'll be announcing our winners. Hope you all had some good snacks and refreshments. Uh, yeah, we'll have our, our colleagues also corralling everybody. Hi, everybody. You can make your way back. Don't want to miss. Oh, it's not good. It's not good. Okay.
Hi, everybody. Welcome back. For those online, thank you for staying with us. We are now excited to announce the winning teams for both the public voting and the $10,000 sponsorships. Um, and we just got word from our colleagues in the judges' room that it was really a very close fight, that I think the, the winners, the difference was um, less than one, 0 0.5 um, points difference. Um, so I'm very excited to see. Actually, we will be finding out with you guys. Um, our, uh, our results are in these envelopes here. We're, we're living out our Oscars dreams today. Uh, <laughs> um, but first up, we'll share the winners of our public voting ca categories. Um, so I think our first category is uh, most eye-catching solution. So do we have do we have the envelope for that, Shazli? Yes, we do. Uh, are you ready to open it? Yeah, most eye-catching solution. All right, should I hold this for you? Oh, yes, please. Okay. And to find out, the winner of the most eye-catching solution is... Schedule. Woo! Wait, can we call that Joe Hitch up? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Mayor Lodes, do you want to come up and help give the... the... Yep. Yes. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, Scan Shield team? Okay. Yeah, I guess we were good. Leaving our Oscar we're, very, dreams. we're very excited. Yeah. yeah, we forgot about our most important person. <laughs> I mean, huh? they, they, they come up. You come up. You come up. The whole team has to come up. Ay, yeah, yeah. Someone's in the bathroom. <laughs> it's okay. We'll Photoshop them in. <laughs> Got it? Awesome. Okay, thank you so much, Team Scan Shield. Uh, all right, we have our next one. What was our next one, Chaz? Okay, our next one is the most touching solution. Like, it might have touched my heart, might have touched the public's heart. So, it's Sarah. Want to go next? Sure. Ooh, oh my gosh, this is so tough. This is so tough. And the winner of the most touching solution is Safe Space. Congrats to our safe space team. They're very tall. <laughs> awesome, thank you. All right. Hey, as next. Next up, we have citizens' choice. So it wow. could be the choice of all of us, I think. So, Sarah, do you want to open the envelope? Sure. We'll do it together, okay? Okay, like, we'll read it together. All right. So the winner for Build for Good 2023 citizens' choice is Pivot Pals. Pivot Pals, <laughs> yay! Awesome, thank you so much. All right. Um, so next, Chaz, I think we have our three winning teams of our $10,000 sponsorship to continue working on their products. Are you ready? I'm ready. It's not easy to give out $10,000, not for my pocket. So, all right. Let's Shall do, we? Yeah, let's, let's do this. All okay. right, first 10K winner. Okay, Chaz, you want to read this out? Oh, wait, 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 say one, two, three, okay? One, two, three. Team, Team MS. MS! And wow, we have a big check. 
Very exciting. I think we only have one check though, so we'll have to recycle it. <laughs> awesome. Great job, Team MS. Yeah, don't take the check. We have to recycle it. Yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we only have one check. <laughs> All right. So next up, we have our second 10K winner. So, Sarah? Shall we? Yes. And the second winner is... One, two, three. Noteflow! Awesome, thank you so much. Thanks, Noteflow. All right, the final team. The final team who's gonna walk away with $10,000 to continue to develop their products. Who shall it be? Who is it gonna be, Shaz? Or how do you pronounce this, actually? I think the final team is Team, team Renaissance. Renaissance. Can, yeah, you can trash away the check together. Yeah. Get, yeah, bring the check down. Bring the check down. Yes. Yeah. Scan the check, recycle it. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. And now to close off an amazing, amazing build for good 2023, we have Miss Lo Yan Ling, who's up on stage already. Give us our closing address. Miss Lo, please. No worries. It's okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. And, uh, now, we had a very difficult job, so while you were enjoying your tea break, really, I know it sounds cliche, but really, every one of you is a winner, right? Come, come now. Don't be so, no? Huh? Really, right? I, I speak on behalf of the five judges. Now, allow me to introduce the four of them, because they've worked hard the entire afternoon. You know, they were very careful. We were really looking at the scores. Our panel of judges, Mr. Lee Hong Yi, Director of Open Government Products. Give me a wave. Mr. Randy Hunt, Distinguished Designer and Author and Chief Product Officer at Morning. And very happy that she has uh, returned to Singapore after 14 years in the US, Ms. Yu Min Wong, GitHub Staff Engineer. And Mr. Sha Fudi, Jaya, Creative Director of Digital Labs Mastercard. Yeah? It's okay, it's okay. It's all right, it's all right. And uh, very good afternoon to all of you, and thank you for spending the uh, afternoon doing the pitch here. Now, the five of us, we were very delighted to join you at the finale for good. On behalf of the five judges, we want to say a big thank you to the 13 teams. Really, it's, um, I, the elevator pitch was splendid, you know, and you know, if anything, we said you guys are really good marketing people, right? But not just marketing people, I think you had a really wonderful uh, prototype. And we want to thank you, the 13 teams and the 60 participants for volunteering your time, precious time, and spending many, many Saturday and Sunday together building a better Singapore in the various areas they have talked about. Helping mental wellness, our, fam our family and friends' mental wellness, focusing on improving environmental sustainability quotient, inclusivity for the community, helping Akong Ama get a job, and of course, you know, fortifying, inoculating our citizens against scam. Really, thank you so much for joining this inaugural hackathon. We can feel your passion is really palpable from where we sit. Now, over the last few hours, the bars and the activities, you know, uh, I think for us it's just two hours, but I think you felt it throughout the four weeks, am I right? And uh, in the video, we saw it. 
and in your short pitch, you talk to us about how we have spent the four weeks together. Very short time, but still enough to get the prototype going. And I think I was just reflecting as we, you know, hear your pitch. And I think on behalf of the judges, allow me to underscore three important points that we learn from your pitch and also learn from the inaugural Built for Good. Firstly, we have many, many talented people in Singapore who care about our literary dots. So how about put our hands together and thank each and every one of you again. <laughs> I turned to Hong Yi, I asked him, are they at least half from GovTech or OGP? Because you guys are really good. Uh, I'm really serious. So I hope you keep the passion burning. Don't let this be just a one-stop project. Now, I think if anything, the last four weeks and this Built for Good uh, hackathon show that when we join our hearts and our minds and our hands together, Together in Singapore, even though we only have 5.5 million population, we can become a formidable force for good. And it's really heartening for us to see people from all walks of life, from students to mummy. Uh, she was saying that she was carrying her baby. Yeah, I think there must be some hacking noise, right? And uh, people in the professionals in the private sector to public offices from various agencies working together to come up with interesting prototypes to tackle some of the really thorniest issues that we in government have been really grappling with for a long time, from recycling to mental health to elder care, etc. I want to share with you, actually, other than myself, uh, I have a lot of colleagues from ministry and agency. I think they're worried that I'll point them out, but they are here because they are here because they know that very exciting ideas will be surfaced today. So that's the first thing, very talented people amongst the participants. Secondly, if anything, the Built for Good hackathon show that the overwhelming response and the participation tells us that we really have very enthusiastic and also active citizenry. Now, within just two weeks of the launch, I understand from Hong Yi and his team, 690 members of the public signed up for Built for Good. And it's not easy, given that it is the inaugural hackathon. Awareness is not high. So it's really remarkable. And for that, I want to thank all of you, as well as the hardworking team in OGP. Thank you to Hong Yi and team. I heard from Hong Yi and team that the final selection of 60 builders, many of whom work full-time job, my God, okay, and then you show your photo of your huddling probably at midnight. You took time out of your work, your study, your leisure time to conduct what we saw, user testing, design prototypes, and you iterated it many, many times and to build the solutions that you're pitching to us. And you show us a QR code that works, you know, and we were testing. And the hackathon, I understand from OGP team, that attracted 78 problem statements that are very practical, and these are a real problem that we are facing in the community, real pain points that the citizens are facing. 78 pro statements for builders to tackle. And many of the prototypes, the 13 prototypes that we saw today, we are really aims to solve the problem. And I've offered some of you, you know, you know, platforms to pilot and to take your ideas further. And the public also gave feedback and suggestions to you, the builders, to enhance your solutions and also your products. Now, so firstly, a lot of talented people. Secondly, I think the overwhelming response is very heartening. Thirdly, if anything, in the last two hours, your 13 pitches, it tells us they illustrate the power of collective efforts. In just one month, our 60 built for good builders were able to create 13 very compelling, very compelling working prototypes. Now, I was just telling, I didn't know the result. Huh? I was just chatting with some of you and I said I'll offer my constituency as a prototype. Because I think if anything, right, you need a platform, a receptacle for you to you know, test it as a proof of concept to really see whether it works and then refine and fine tune this and take it further. Now, again, allow me to cite one simple proof point. Hong you correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was three years ago that you started the OGP hackathon, am I right? Was it January, four years ago, 2019? 2019, 2019, and he started the hackathon within OGP. And um, when in CDC, I mean, I wear different hats, and coming out of the COVID, um, the circuit breaker, we decided that, you know, the population may not be quite ready to scan QR code, but we want to do something to help the low-income families, the lower middle income family. We printed CDC voucher. Many of you didn't know that because it was a pay voucher in June 2020, $20 million for 400,000 households. And we worked with them, uh, but we felt that, okay, it's not quite ready for the Redeem SG. And six months later, we carry on and launch another 20 million. But then, shortly after that, we felt that, you know, because of safe entry, I think the whole nation 
knows how to scan QR code and we are a little bit more au fait with it. And because of that, we announced the first tranche of $122 million of CDC voucher using Redeem SG. Redeem SG was spawned our hackathon. And then in May 2022, we launched a second tranche of $122 million of CDC voucher. In January 2023, DPM Lawrence Wong launched $360 million. So all in all, the Redeem SG has you know, seen a flow of $650 million of CDC voucher, most of it for our HDB shop and hawker, and some part of it for supermarket. So dare to dream, dare to do, right? Do not underestimate how your prototype can go to market and benefit community, can benefit the vulnerable families and Singaporeans in the future. We are here to make your dreams come alive. So again, on behalf of the colleagues from the ministry, the agencies, OGP and the judges, congratulations to all the participating teams for your good ideas and outstanding work. I really mean it. Every one of you to us, you're a winner. By the mere fact, you're at the finale. It's really wonderful to see the creative and the competitive energies of all the team. We're very impressed by your creativity and the solutions that were developed. And again, if you decide to take your idea further, your projects further, many of us will be keen to see how to support you. So I really mean it for the trash away. I was not trying to you know, ask you a trick question, but you should you know, negotiate NEA, you know, ask them to try to ring fans a bit, of, a bit of money, to dangle as carrot, right? And make this as a game. Again, we'll be happy to quite, you know, identify some pilot sites, maybe in my constituency to try this out as a game, as part of a workshop, you know, and to inject a bit of competition between different RCs. Get it going. And once you have gained attraction and a certain number of users, I think that's where you have negotiating power. Am I right? So again, thank you so much. And to the three winning teams, we look forward to seeing you turn your prototype into fusion, into a reality with the $10,000 prize money. I trust that you will help fellow Singaporeans to tackle the issues they face on a daily basis and make a real difference. Now, dear friends, today's finale really is just a beginning of the enormous potential good that this hackathon will create. We are all very energized by you and very inspired to continue to build for good, to make Singapore a caring, inclusive and resilient home. And I think it's very timely we do this a couple of weeks before the nation celebrate 58th birthday. So please remember, dare to dream, dare to do. Thank you so much. All right. Once again, a round of applause for Ms. Lo. And... Yeah, and thank you guys so much for um, for attending, for building, for participating with us. Um, that's that's a wrap. That's that's all we have for today. Thank you so much. Yeah, before you go, a round of applause for yourselves also for building amazing prototypes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, we're gonna take a group photo. A so quick how are we gonna photo? take a group photo? I so where's the photographer? Photographer. Hi. Where are you? Yeah. You oh, have okay. to come down here, take a photo, yes, yeah. Alright, uh, for everyone here, can you like compact to the to your right? And for those here, can you like compact to your left? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so empty seats cover up, just like compact to your right over here and compact to your left over here. Should we? I think we should, right? Should we? Should we just sit here? Nah, it's okay. <laughs> okay, like a very cute family photo, right? So, all compact ready? All compact ready? Compact, compact, compact. Compact, 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 compact. Oh, right, okay. The check is there. Everyone just remember to smile, okay? All right, where's the photo? Okay, everyone here, yeah? Uh? Oh. Yeah, empty row. Yeah, there's an empty row. It's not like, I, I don't think it's that particular month. You might want to move forward. Do you want to move forward? Move forward. 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 Move forward.
and so wrong wrong row so the row supposed to be front not at the back. Okay, last one, okay, last one. At the count of like build four, when I say good, you just left hand with like a good hand sign, okay? Alright. Okay. okay, one, two, three, build four. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, okay, ready, okay. Okay, we try again. I think oh, someone's gonna take it for the gram, okay. Ready, one, two, three, build four. Alright, one more time, one more time. One, two, three, build four. Just in front, that's all. 